Let's get started. We are going to talk about primary coverage area for the most, for the best that we can. Um, we can talk about some of the plays that we see and what rules applies, but I really want to focus more on the primary coverage area and did the right official call it? Did the wrong official call it? Where should we have been standing and looking and all that good stuff? So uh, let's get started. Roll those clips. <laughs> all right. All right, we see that? Everyone's good? Yes. All right, I'm just gonna play it first and then we'll see. We'll talk about it. All right, for those that aren't, weren't watching or didn't see it, there is something that happens right in this area here. All right, I'm gonna play it fast again and then we'll play it slow and point it out. That is what the official whistled. All right, so the kid did went the kid went down pretty hard, and the home team coach is pretty upset because he doesn't think anything happened. What do you guys think? Here it is, slow again, real quick. Do we have a foul on the offense, a foul on the defense, or nothing? I got nothing. I got nothing. 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 It looks pretty nothing. It looks pretty incidental, doesn't it? But let's talk about the area. So we're gonna pause it here. Whose area is this? Yours. The center, so right? Me. The center's area. He's got all of that. All right, sorry. Okay, so the ball is in the center's area. So the center official is watching the ball, right? And this matchup here, that's what he's watching. That's his primary focus. We should always have a primary and a secondary focus. The lead here, right, is all of this stuff. He's only got these two guys in his area. So that's his primary focus. At this particular point in the play, he's watching those two players. And our, our trail, He's got everything else, right? So he's gonna be watching all those players. Now, he probably can't focus on all of these players all at the same time, so he might have a primary here and a secondary over here, but that's his responsibility, okay? So as the ball progresses, and you can see the center is now getting into a better position, right? Because before the ball came down, he's straight lined, right? Anything happens here, who's gonna get that? I can tell you who's not going to get it, the center, right? So the center comes up to get a better position. Now, before we continue, this is, I also want to talk about not just PCAs, but positioning. What is the center doing? He's rolling up to get a better, to a better look. So who needs to take notice of this? The lead, right? Because even though some people say the lead initiates all rotations, except the center can do it sometimes. The center never initiates a rotation, never. Because if the lead doesn't come over, a rotation doesn't happen. The lead is the one who always initiates. However, what people mean is when the center starts to move outward, the lead needs to go, uh-oh, he's moving out, so I better really think about switching, uh, switching, rotating. He needs to think hard. So the lead needs to pick up the fact that the center's coming out. Now, do I suggest the lead come over and rotate? Does anyone think the lead should come over and rotate on this yet? Too early. No, way too early, because where are all the players? There's two players here, and everyone else is on that side. So there's no reason for a rotation. The center's just coming up to get a better look. All right. Ball is still in. The center's area and the lead has still got all of those players. And where does the trail have? Right? He's got less guys now, but he's still in his primary area. He's watching everything out there. Now, again, right now, everybody is focused on their primary area, as it should be. So now when the ball comes out, now what happens? The ball is now in the air 
in transition. The center is still going to be focusing on this because he was initially, right? He's not going to automatically just say, well, I better now focus on something else. That's his primary area. He's got these players here too, but his primary focus is still these two. The lead, still going to be working in this area. The lead should be seeing all of this garbage happening right here because the lead has been looking in the paint the whole time, right? His primary area. And then the trail is going to notice that the ball is coming his way. And when the ball is in your primary coverage area, what are you watching? Now, for those of you, I'm sorry, I'm interjecting. For those of you that want to say something, you can stay muted, but when you put your space bar down, if you're at a PC, it unmutes and you can talk and then you can lift it up again and, and then it mutes you again. Uh, you don't have to talk, but. All right, so when the ball comes in, it's, it's in flight, I realize, but the trail is seeing that the ball will be coming into his area, right? So the trail is going to pick up the ball. When the ball's in your primary coverage area, your primary focus is the ball. Always, 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 because the ball is the, where the action is. Correct. All right. So when it progresses and the crash happens here in the paint, who do you think should get that? Whose call should that be? Technically, the crash happened in, let's go back. Jeez. In the center's area, right? Technically, it happened in the center's area. But what is the center watching? These guys. Right? Who's watching that? The lead. The lead's been watching it the whole time. So who calls that? The lead. The lead is going to have the most information on whether that play is legal or illegal. The trail is probably the furthest away from the play. And even though I would agree he started in the trail's area, he needs to release that play because the ball's coming into his area. He can't just follow and ignore the ball. Right? Now the lead, maybe the lead didn't see it come in, and that's fine. But what I saw when we played here is the kid came in and the offense, the defensive team, the home team, put his hands out because the kid's coming right at him. He's not pushing him. He's not trying to inhibit his movement. He's trying to protect himself because the player's coming right at him, right? And then what happens? The kid loses his footing and he falls. Slipped. He slipped. Yeah. All because, of the, all because of the visiting team, the offensive team's action. The reason he fell has nothing to do with what the defender did to him. So if the trail didn't reach out of his area into what the lead was watching, we would have correctly had nothing. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. And that's why I hate when guys say, when two bodies go to the floor, and I don't only want win here, but when two bodies go to the floor, we have to have a whistle. When one body falls to the floor, we need to think about having a whistle. That's not always true. You have to judge each play on its merit alone. Don't go with that old adage. It's kind of old school of, well, a whistle, because, you know, they, everyone else thinks it's a foul. It's a foul or it's not a foul. Don't blow it because, it, because of certain things happen especially with video on every game now. All right. Hey Josh? Yeah. What did you think it was? I had nothing. I thought it was incidental. Because when, when you go back to that, it almost looks like the lead is also straight lined. And I don't know if he didn't call it because he didn't see it or if he didn't call it because nothing happened. I don't know. But if look at the lead. Look at the lead's face. He's looking in the paint, right? Yep. He's still looking in the paint. He sees this action. This is his area. So, yes, he may have been straight-lined, and I'm not going to argue that. It's possible. But it, he knows that something happened, right? Right. So I'm going to say to myself, that's the Leeds area. My partner, he's going to get it. He's going to not get it. It's on my partner. Because I can't go straying off of what I have here, right? It's pretty quick in transition. The trail's got to pick up the ball, so he's got to be quick. That's what I think. The other thing was uh, that red player, his left arm, I was just curious as to 
you couldn't see from here, but how close it came to the kid's face. Boom. He may have hit him. Yep. Now, I'm still calling that incidental if he did hit him. I don't think there was any malicious act. I don't think he took him out. Because even though it's not malicious doesn't mean it's not a foul. But I think it's incidental, right? What, the way the rule is written is sometimes contact can be severe, but is still incidental. And especially because the way the home team kid player reacted doesn't look like if he did hit him, he didn't really hit him that hard because he didn't really do anything. And that's okay too, by the way. You see an elbow maybe hit a face. You can wait a second and see how the kid reacts. Most kids are not smart enough or devious enough to act as though they got fouled or elbowed. or They just react normally, most kids. And I know there's some out there that are sneaky, but – so, yeah, that, what, I just watched a thing on YouTube today. Uh, watch the play start, develop, and finish before you think about making a call. Start, develop, finish. Then blow your whistle or not blow your whistle. Decide on what you're going to do after it starts, develops, and finishes. Not, don't see just the start. Don't see just the finish. See all of it. All right. How we feel on that one? Let's do another one. Okay. Hey, did we see that? I got to turn this volume down a little bit. This is a loud clip. It happens down here, and the, the center calls a travel. So let's see what happened, and then we'll play it slow again. So first of all, let's watch it. And what do you think we have? Oh, I didn't do a slow, I'm sorry. I'm just gonna do it slow this way. So he comes in, right? He picks up the ball here, it looks like, and comes down. Where does he pick up the ball? It's too bad, I didn't slow it and I can't freeze frame it with this. It looks like he holds it here. What do you think? This looks like a gather here, right? The dribble is ended. He's on, his, he's on his left foot, so he comes forward, takes another step. Yes, he holds it with two hands now, but the dribble had ended, and then he brings the left foot back down. So I think that is a travel. So let's look at the coverage area. Because travels can be tough sometimes when there's 10 players all running around, right? So right now we've got, this is the leads area. All right, and the lead is primarily watching what? The players in his area, right? He should be focused more on this matchup here, right? Because the lead has everything in that three-point arc. And this is the matchup with the ball. What are we watching when the ball's in our primary coverage area? We're watching the ball and whatever matchup is with it. All right, so then when it comes in again, the lead still has this area, right? The lead should still be watching this ball, this matchup. So why doesn't the lead have a call here? I well, he had a blocking call there. What's that? I thought he had a blocking call. Well, the lead called nothing. Right, I know. Yeah, I don't mm -hmm. think he called anything. But the center came in with the travel, which, which the travel did happen. Uh, let me go back. So the lead, one, is focused on the play. And maybe the lead had a brain freeze. Maybe the lead didn't see where the ball was picked up. I mean, these are all possible things because when the lead is so close to a play, usually when it's a little bit further down, the lead can't necessarily see the feet to the head, right? So the lead's got to focus on something. But who else is watching this? The trail, right, who has all of this garbage up here, has got a secondary look at it. And the trail can come in and get this if the lead does not. We, go, we are going to give the lead first crack. Because why, do, why does lead get first crack at it? His area. It's his area. It's his area. We do not call out of our area right out of the gate. 
right? We let the official make that call. However, we can always come in after the fact. The center is also watching all of this the whole time he's watching this, so he's looking into the paint. So the center can come in and get that. And I think in this play, it is completely acceptable that the center comes in and blows his whistle and gets this. Now, again, Maybe I don't... I, I disagree with that. The center is clearly at ball watching. You know, you, you just had, if you back up the tape, you'll see that players come into a zone. His responsibility is to pay attention to that off the ball activity track, coming into the zone, make sure players are not doing anything to each other. And yet he's watching across the lane into that area, which is, you know, just ball watching. And all it's right, let's, responsibility to pick up that call. All right, let's look at this. So here's from the beginning, all right? Ball's up here. I didn't diagram all this, but this is the trail, right? Trail's got it. Center's got mm -hmm. these guys here, right? Lead has everything else. That's all 10 guys, two, four, six, eight. Well, we're missing two guys. They're in the corner over here. All right, so the ball comes down. I think you're right. It does look like he's ball watching, doesn't it? I can't tell exactly where he's looking, and I don't want to make an assumption, but it looks like he might be looking over there, which, let's be honest, we all ball watch sometimes. And I'm not going to say it's okay to ball watch, but if you do, be aware that you are so you don't blow your whistle when you're not in your area. And correct it, obviously. But all right, with that said, ball comes down. I can't tell where he's looking here. It looks like he's focusing here, but maybe he's looking across. So you could be right. Maybe he's ball watching. But my point is, look, he's got these areas. Right now, he's got these guys right? And what's now what's he looking in? He's looking into the paint. He's got these two guys, which are pretty much doing nothing. So to me, even though this might be your primary focus, you have to have the wherewithal to say, these guys aren't doing anything. I need to focus on something that something may happen, which is going to most likely be in the paint, right? That's why the center and the lead share the paint. Uh, I guess this is my concern. I'm just okay. asking opinion because you have a lot of experience is that the way the three man is set up it's always uh, it's set up in a way that you're always going to have a primary and a secondary opportunity to make that call if you're the third sherry uh, uh, person in the play third third ref some you may see it do you I mean do you call it does it does it does it give a different perception if, if you're calling that way out of your coverage and it's not an egregious play like it's not an egregious foul that just everybody missed and I got to pick it up do I call that and, and kind of give that perception that I'm not focusing on what I should be focusing on so that is a, a great question and an excellent point and I'm going to answer it the best I can to to your satisfaction <laughs> so everything you said is actually true because one and this is what we're trying to focus on today this is probably a bad clip to start with but you want to stay in your primary area for a reason because one, you can't watch the whole court. It's impossible. You're going to miss something, right? So you have to share the court Two, The reason there's an area for you is because you're in a position to, to properly monitor that area. Right now to your point, there's always going to be a primary caller and a secondary caller. And there's going to be areas where all three officials can call it because right. We've got it split up the line here. And it's split here. So usually right around in this area, you could have a triple whistle. And I think a triple whistle is acceptable in this area here. Other than that, maybe we shouldn't ever have a triple whistle, but it's possible. But to your point, it all comes down to one. Did you call it right away and not allow your primary official to get it? Two, was it obvious enough, egregious enough, the whole gym saw it, and your partner missed it and you got to come in and get it. That is really the deciding factor. And three, let's say the trail is all the way up here and the play is all the way down here. And the trail, the trail, maybe even if he saw it and it was egregious and everyone missed it, maybe the trail still can't even get it because when you are so far away, it is hard to sell that you got a foul when you were, you know, 40 feet away, 50 feet away. On top of that, you're going to have, you know, those savvy coaches who kind of understand what you just did are going to complain to you all game long that you're not picking up calls um, out of zone because you've already established the fact that you do it sometimes. 
And so, and so that's a good point. Um, and if you do that, one, you're going to be 100%, 110% sure that you had to come in and get it, right? So when a coach is on you, you say, yes, coach, you're right. But it was a travel. You saw it was a travel. Or coach, I was looking right through the lane when he came in. I had the perfect view. My partner was straight, even if you make it up, my partner was straight line or my partner. So if you can sell your confidence to that coach, he's not going to pick on you as much, hopefully. I realize some coaches pick, 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 pick. But those savvy coaches that you're talking about also know that certain angles sometimes see better than other angles, even though you're further away. And I give coaches a lot of credit because they do use that in their favor. But if you're able to defend your call by your position, they'll respect it for the most part. Josh, with that, with that, uh, that center official, and like you said before, he's watching those two guys at number three and the other guy. They're really not doing anything. They're just that, that, looks like they're just standing there. So I could see where the guy was looking a little more in the lane, and maybe he had a better view of it, and he wasn't blocked, and he was able to see it, and he called it. Right, and so that's a good point. It's, again, we're aware that this is our primary focus. However, they're not doing anything, right? So we know as a good official, I'm going to focus a little further out. I'm going to widen my view. And I'm going to focus into the paint. I'm not suggesting look all the way across the court because your lead has that play, right? If you're focusing on that, you are wasting your um, extra pair of eyes to call the game properly because, yes, you still need to be aware of these guys because if they throw an elbow or push or do something, you got you to get it. But if you can widen your view, open your view up, and you see that there's some driving in here, and some defending, you might get an illegal screen or a push through a screen. And I think that might be what he was, I, I, again, I can't tell what he was really looking at the whole way. But it came right into where he was looking through. He was trying to offer help. I'm not suggesting the C gets this, but I'm suggesting that it is okay in this situation that the C did because he was looking through the paint, which is part of his area. Josh, this is Ken, and I'm, yep. I'm jumping in a little late here. Just to I think this is traveling, right? That we're looking well, at. Well, Ken, you're not allowed to uh, comment if you come in late. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Yes. Yes. Yeah, okay. so you call the travel. So the question here is: that I've heard a general axiom from senior officials that I'm going to come and get that egregious, but traveling's never really egregious. So I'm never going to call travel outside my area. What do you think about that approach? I think I don't. I don't agree with that. I, I, that's a hard, it's a hard thing to, to give a black and white yes or no to because every play is different. Any, thought, any thoughts on why? But I would there's, say. There's so many components to travel that you've got to be able to see. And when it's out of your area, you're at a distance and you're, you don't have a, the best angle on gather, on pivot, on other things that are going on. And I think that contributes to it that that's just what I've heard some, from some senior officials that they're trying to judge when to go outside your area i 100 percent agree with when you're when you're in your out of your primary and into a secondary you increase your your probability greatly of not being able to see the whole play and we talked about the start develop and finish the start develop and finish of a traveling is pivot foot when did the pivot foot start and so i think what happened now again i am totally just making a, a, a guess here but I think what this official called was he saw the big step at the end, right? And what does the big step at the end mean? Well, that means he traveled, right? Well, we all know that that's not true. Everyone in the gym thinks it's true. But just because there's a big step doesn't mean, or a paused step or whatever it may mean, it's a travel. So to your point, yes. If you're going to come in out of your area, I'm not saying don't ever call a travel because it's not egregious. But you better know that it was a travel because your partner may have passed on it on purpose because he didn't think that the gather started because he was still, you know, getting a hold of the ball. Who knows what he was thinking? So yes, uh, now maybe you all think I'm talking out of both sides of my mouth here now, but yes, it's okay for the center to come and get this. Yes, he did travel. But what would I do in my game? If I was the center, I would be passing. I would not be calling that because I am trusting my partner that he got it. And if the coach yells at me that we missed a travel, all I have to say is, coach, my partner was right there. He saw the whole play, right? You're not saying he was right. You're not saying he was wrong. You're just saying he had the best 
spot on the floor to see that play. And you move on, and the coach will move on. All right. Should we move on to the next one? Yep. Yes. Was that a bad clip? Should I take that out of my repertoire? <laughs> a lot of discussion. That's good. That's what we went here for. We want to make sure we understand. All right. Josh, we should see some video of you. I don't have any video of me. Are you kidding? Why? That we could critique you. Come on. I only have video of me. This is one of my games. All right. <laughs> all right. Are you ready, Dennis? One of my games. <laughs> is it? Oh, my gosh. Let's see what happens. I don't even know what happens here. Did you guys see that? Right here in the paint. Look right here in the paint. There's no whistle. The guy pushes the – blocks him out. He pushes him back. What does he okay. do? He's backing him out. He takes him out. The black player takes out the white player. Whether it's intentional or not, that is a foul. That player – even though, but don't tell me he didn't have a legal guarding position. He doesn't need to have a legal guarding position to stand in that spot on the floor. He is in that spot and he is allowed to stand there. You cannot move a player out of their spot if they are there legally. And then he is there legally. He's not guarding anyone, but he's allowed to stand there. Do we all agree with that? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yes. okay. Absolutely. So when this player runs into him, whether it's on purpose or by accident, that's a foul. And the mere fact that he went down, everybody in the gym now sees it. So somebody's got to get that, in my opinion. Somebody's got to get that. So why didn't we get it? Let's look at the coverage area. What's happening right now? Shot going up, right? I want to back this. Did I? All right, where's my, my shot? All right. I just want to back this up real quick because on a shot, pause it. What is our center looking at center should be looking at the contact whether there's contact on the shooter in my opinion should he be watching the ball oh no he needs to stay with this yeah, shooter, he needs to keep stay with that contact yes he needs to stay with the shooter because there That's is right. a defender that is coming at him and we yeah. need to know if he hits him or not right because if the ball goes in and you don't see that it goes in you think someone else will see it obviously yeah. someone else will see it so yeah. we don't need to worry about it all right what is the lead looking at? Under the paint, in my opinion, whether or not those two guys are gonna, that's going at it are, you know, anything illegal happening, in my opinion. That is correct. The lead, yes, this is the lead's area. But on a rebound, primary coverage areas widen because we all have different responsibilities during a shot, right, on a try for a goal. So the lead needs to be watching for the low rebounding action here. Yeah. Obviously, these two guys are nothing right now. What's our matchup? This right here. Right. So the leader's watching these two guys. What is the trail should be watching? First of all, what is the trail doing at the division line? Far down. That's way too far, especially on a shot. When there is a shot, a try for a goal, both the center and the trail. Now the center, maybe not so much in the play here because the, the shot's right here, but you need to step down, close yeah. down, step into the play, because if I do see a foul here or here, you don't want to have to come running in or be 30 feet away when you blow your whistle, right? You want to be up here. So then now when you take three steps, hey, I was right there. Not only that, it helps if you're not sure whether the guy's foot was on the line and the trail could also help out with that, you know, if there's any question there. So, right. So let's move on. Now the ball gets to the basket. And it bounces. So now we're in a rebounding situation. And again, the primary focus of the lead is this. Because these are two of the same teammates, right? So they're not going to mm -hmm. pose a problem. This is the action. Right. He's going to be aware of these two. Because if they come running in or do something, then he needs to know what happens. But that's his secondary. Okay. Here's our trail. Now, again, the trail is way too far out. The trail has to move in. But primarily, the trail is watching the ball and any of this action that might be happening rebounding here. But right now, there's nothing to look at. Does trail have uh, goaltending and basket interference? Yes. 
So both trail and center share that responsibility. However, since the center has to watch the shooter, that becomes the, the uh, trail's primary pos uh, responsibility. We understand that, right? And if it was the trail had to stay with the shooter, then the center's primary responsibility would be that. But they can both still call it. And that's why the trail is looking up higher at the ball because he needs to determine if anything happens, jumps up there or whatnot. All right, and the secondary focus is to be on those guys because who knows what's gonna happen. The center has all this area. Now that the defender has released and we know that the shooter is okay, he's gonna focus also again on this action here because this is where the shoving and the pushing and the trying to get the rebound is gonna come from, right? Yep. And the secondary focus are the guys out here, great. So now we're, all the players are covered either primarily or secondarily. And then what happens? The guy in the, well, actually, if you look, the guy in the white uh, on the baseline backs the other player out of the lane there. Yeah. So we got, we got a box out here, but are we going to call a foul? Yes, technically he's displacing him, but is the ball coming his way? Is the defender being put, is the, the, the black team being put at a disadvantage? No. No, no that's nothing. Because the ball went this way, so even though he's pushing them out, he's not gaining an advantage or putting the player at a disadvantage. Well, the uh, guy, uh, the uh, player that has the uh, black uniform, he is, uh, has a disadvantage because if he's backing them out, he can't go around them to go get, maybe possibly get a rebound. Is he trying to go around him? Well, we don't know. Look. But he keeps pushing them back out. Watch the play. What's he doing? Nothing. He's Staying watching up. the ball bounce the other way and just seeing what happens. If you see that that player is trying to get around and is being held, I agree with you. We might have a potential foul. I might still pass on it, but we might have a foul now that he's trying to do something, but they're both just doing nothing. Yes, he's backing them down, but. That's, that's not egregious enough to call a foul. All right. So now this is where it's about to happen. What is the, the primary focus of the lead? The ball is bouncing this way. So what is the lead watching? The ball. The ball. He's got to know what happens with that ball and who gets to the ball. And so the primary focus still is the ball. And it's not really here because he's moving with the ball. Doesn't mean that he's not going to have a secondary focus. He should definitely be having a secondary focus here. What is the, the, the center watching? The center is watching this action still. And he's getting ready to call a foul on this, Dennis. Just kidding, he's not. <laughs> but he's also watching here, okay? Because this is all of the trail's primary. So the trail has a uh, center's primary. The center's got a lot of guys in his area to cover, right? Correct. Look at that. Yeah, you moved down. That's wow. Good. If Close he down. would just be yeah. closed down and being closer, he would be in a much better position to get this play. I'm not suggesting the lead can't get it, but the if the trail were in closer, the trail would have had a better look at this play and would have been able to come in and get it. But because he's so far away, he's looking at the ball, and he's watching this action, nobody sees this kid get barreled from behind. All right, so the point of this clip is close down. Yep. Even now, the center, in my opinion, can take a few steps on the court as the ball's bouncing that way. Come in a little. You want to be closer to the play so you can get it. You got to train, you got to train yourself to step down when the ball goes up, right? It's a hard thing to learn, and there's yep. officials, even me, that was me. That was three years ago. That was me, and I didn't close down. Why? I didn't want to get beat. Now, is that my conscious thought? No, probably not. But subconsciously, I know I'm not the fastest guy on the court. So I back away, right? That's my natural tendency, but we can't do that. If we get beat, we get beat. We can always stop and watch a play from behind. But we, if we miss this, we, we as a crew, we failed. That kid got fouled pretty badly, and the coach saw it and knows it. And, you know, what are we going to do? We missed it. All right, so close down. That's what we learned from that. Anything else till I move on? Good. 
All right. Here's another one where the trail's too far away, but watch this. Maybe call though. Did we see that? I'm gonna play it again. This drives me crazy. And this is what I was trying to get at earlier. Look at the trail, watch what the trail does. And the trail's the one who calls the play all the way down here. He started to bail. Look, he's moving away from the play and I get it. The ball is now in control here. The lead has got that play. We can start moving into position. I'm okay with that. Start getting into your new position. But why are you still watching that play? As the trail, what should you be watching? Um, or All of these players here right and here. hustling to get to the other end because it's going to go the other way. You've got a trail and a lead. I'm sorry, a, uh, a lead and a center who can even come in and help that. The trail is not needed on that play. Not at all. I don't even think it was a foul. Right? So now he's 30 feet away, and this official's right on top of it. And to, I don't know who asked it, but to your point earlier, does distance come into play when you come in and get a foul? Absolutely it does. Was this play egregious enough to come and get? Maybe he hit him on the arm. Maybe he swiped and caused him to lose the ball and, and got a part of his arm. Was that egregious enough to come 30 feet away to get? I say no. Let your yes, lead. Is that, you, is, is that you, the center on this? No, this is not my game. This is a oh. friend of mine's game. Okay. I, the reason why I was asking, I thought that was you, is I thought, uh, if anything, if 33 uh, whacked him on the arm way before that last foul was called, if he didn't call it, I thought it should play on. Right. So the lead, I mean, can you get in any better position as the lead? The lead's oh. looking right at the play. He's not straight lined. He's looking right at it. And yes, the play turns away and he might not be able to see exactly what happens here, but I'm still going to let the lead make that decision because he is literally six feet away from the play. The center maybe can move in a little bit, but he's kind of looking at the play too. He's still closer than the trail. The trail should be worried about getting into position on the other end of the court. Do we agree with that or, or does someone have a second opinion? Nope, nope, nope. Nope, I agree. I agree. I, agree. Nope. I know we are now. Here's another factor. Someone was telling me you have a partner who is new and he's a little bit weaker, right? He's coming up, he's not quite ready. You're a veteran, you're a new guy. Are you still coming in to get that? I'm not. No, I'm not. My, my partners, whether they're new or not, are not going to get any better if they're not allowed to make those tough calls. And if he screws it up and misses it and gets yelled at, that's part of the learning process of getting better. If you constantly try and coddle because you don't want to get yelled at by a coach, that's not going to help your partners, your, your fellow officials. And I realize that's in the grander scheme of things. And I'm not saying pass on a call that you know is hundred percent a call. What I'm saying is, as we all agree, that's his call. It doesn't matter whether he gets it right or wrong. It's his call. And if a coach yells at me, I'm going to say, coach, he was right on top of the play. He was right there. He had the best look, right? I say that a lot when coaches yell at me because I may even agree with the coach, but it doesn't matter whether I agree. I may have had the same angle as the coach, but I wasn't right next to the play. I don't know what happened. All right. Now, this is my game. Again, those of you that are uh, charting the calls, uh, the games of my <laughs> calls of my game. And this one, the video doesn't give it justice, but I'm going to explain what happened. Something's going to happen over here on the sideline. There's not going to be any call or any whistle. So just watch it. Whoa. Everybody saw that, right? Oh, absolutely. What a mess. <laughs> what happened? Well, let's diagram it out. 
First of all, we've got the leads primary, right? And so what is he looking right. at? He's got the ball, the throw in. And on a throw in, we have to look past the ball as well. And so he's looking into his area over here. Why does he not cover these guys in this area here? That's what the trail is for. Well, it's not the trail's area, but the trail's got nothing to look at. So the trail is going to be picking up this player, right? And now this is when a crew, if a crew works to well together, even if you don't, but when a crew works a lot together, they start to know that my partner's going to have this because I've got to have this. Or he's going to say, he's got to have that, so I better get this, right? All right. And then let's see, what does the center have? He has all this stuff here. So he's looking into the lane, widening his focus to make sure we have extra help here. We're good so far, right? Right. Yes. All right. So the plate progresses and the ball comes in now. Whoops. So the lead, since the ball was just passed in, is still looking in this area, right? That's where he's looking because the ball was just passed in. But where is the ball? The ball's here in the center's primary, right? So the lead, yes, needs to be aware of this in this here, but he really needs to start focusing more here. So his secondary is here, but he needs to start paying a little more attention to this. However, the trail is also paying attention to this because that's what he's been watching this whole time. Good so far? Good. Yep. Yes. All right. Yep. Well, the trail's also helping out with the lane, as he should. And the center's got that. All right, we already said that. Now, as the play progresses, I just want to stop it first of all right oh, here. Wow. The ball goes up. Where's the lead, the, the trail looking? It looks like he's looking here either at the ball or this action here. Look, he's looking here. Where's the center looking? Same. Where's the yeah. lead looking? Same. 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 Same nobody's watching these players. And that's why this play got out of control because nobody watched them. That's why we always have to have eyes on all the players at all the time, even though usually 98% of the time they, you know, act like choir, boy, choir boys. Uh, but something could happen, which something did. So now the trail should be which is now the new lead because they, they gained the ball, but should be still focusing here, right? He shouldn't have given that up. The new trail, which was the lead, because we're going the other way, needs to open up, right? Now, is there a foul yet? Maybe, but have we called anything yet? No, we have not. Can we still have a foul? Maybe. We could. We could, even if we get something late, right? And then, of course, the center also needs to deepen his look to look now i'm not suggesting that he comes all the way across the court and make the call but he needs to be looking deeper now because he can't just focus on a transition play you can't just focus in your primary because there's no longer a primary here this is no longer a front court situation right so we have to cover more court all three officials have to cover more court in a transition So who should have gotten this play? Trail. Probably trail. should have been trail, right? The lead could have also got it if the lead was a little more aware, but the lead, I can understand, is focusing in his paint, right? I understand it's always split down the lane, it's shared, but who primarily takes the paint? The lead, right? The lead, take, he's watching the paint. His eyes are there all the time. So I think the trail really should get this. Now, here's my hey. question. Go ahead, question. Hey, Josh. When you look at that, it, you know, like you said, should there really be a call? It looks like they both lost their balance and fell on the floor. Right. So that's. I, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying that, but it, it, that's what it appears. I mean, I didn't see the guy pull him down. It just said they got their feet tangled up and they both lost their balance and fell down. It's a, it's a great, great point. And we as a crew talked about it a lot because we all saw the end of it. We all yeah. kind of didn't catch the whole thing. Me, this is me. I'm the center over here. I saw once they fell down, once they fell down, I, now I'm like, what is going on over there? But I am so far away. I am, I don't want to say afraid. That's not the word I want to use, but I'm afraid to make a call because I'm too far away. I shouldn't be the one coming to get it. Although 
it is a transition play. So would I be okay to come running in? I could. I'm still not sure, Dennis, who fouled who. But when they foul here, it sure looks like now the white player is cupping his legs around the black player. Right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Now what you can't I see, like I said, this doesn't do it justice. What you can't see is as this plays on, his legs are prohibiting the black player, player from now getting up and continuing on. He's not holding him, but he's keeping his legs up as if he's like protecting himself. But we all know as officials, you're not protecting yourself. Come on. You're trying to get in his way, which is what he was doing. So now I'm watching this whole thing thing saying, should I get it? Should I not? Should I get it? Should I not? And I'm letting it play out. Then when this kid finally gets away, what you can't see is, and this is why I'm, I'm upset about how I, I handled this play because there's a teammate on the bench that stood up and crouched over him and yelled something. He didn't point, he didn't whatever, but he got up and he got in his face. That is a technical foul. And I passed on it. And it's because I don't know really what happened. I don't know who pulled who down. I don't know who fouled who. I know kind of what happened after the fact. And it was more of a, geez, do I want to penalize that kid? Because maybe he really deserves getting yelled at. You know, no one deserves getting yelled at. But you understand what I'm saying. So it's hard when you don't know what happened from start to develop to finish. Right. Did, did the Just, coach uh, say anything to you, like after the game or between halves or something about that play? No, and I'll tell you why. This player here the, in the black, I'm trying to get a good stop of him. Let's just say, so this player right here who was in that fiasco, he was in 15, 20 uh, little tussles like that. They weren't all that bad, but he was always falling down. He was always causing someone else to fall down. He was involved in every single play. And we knew as a crew going into it because of, my partner had him like a week before. And they said, number five causes problems. And so we knew that he was possibly the one who caused the whole problem, even though it looked like the white player did. So again, we weren't sure. And um, yeah, you're right. Uh, Josh, Josh, I'm on my phone, so I can't tell. Did that ball go in the basket? Uh, you mean this that shot? Yeah, is that a made basket? Yeah. Okay, so it's after it goes call. in the basket, the ball's dead. If we got a foul over there, we've got to call it technical. Is that true? Uh, depends when you call it, because the f here. Let's go closer. Yeah, I'm. I'm looking. I'm. I'm. I know it has to be clearly after the basket is made, and I wouldn't want to get too close to that. All right. So right now the ball is dead. Okay. You know, maybe a, a second before, but now it's dead. So if you have a foul between now. And Cause that ball bounces around a little bit. Yeah. And he doesn't have position of it. So even a foul here, you would have a dead ball foul, which is a, a technical intentional foul. Right. I was just so, clarifying that in my head. So I will say this, this is where I, I'm usually pretty technical and usually pretty to the book, but I'm also very common sense. And if I'm going to have a foul on that, I'm going to have a regular common foul unless the kid on the bench did something because the kid on the bench can't do anything. Right. But if I have it on those two players, even though the ball is dead because it went through the basket, I'm still going to penalize it as if it was a live ball because that's what everybody thinks. And that doesn't mean we do it because everyone thinks it, but the common sense thing is unless again, you think it was this egregious play that the kid took them down because the ball went through and I'm going to keep them from starting a fast break. And you could have a lot of reasons for it. But if you just think it's two kids that got tussled up and one kid kind of held the other, I don't know. To and, me, and you could you could probably make the argument that the contact started before the dead ball. You know, you could stretch that a bit if if somebody got technical on you. It, right. No. Right. You could say that they say it's a technical intentional foul. I could say, well, I was letting the play start, develop, and finish. <laughs> now, to the kid that came up off the bench. Was he still out of bounds, or did he come onto the floor a little bit when he was yelling at the other kid? No, he was out of bounds, and he didn't get up all the way. His butt came off the his seat by like three inches. You oh. know, he just wanted to lean over a little bit, but it was noticeable enough to me across the court to go, crap. And I don't know why I didn't blow my whistle. That happens sometimes. And that's why, again, like the last play when I said, why did the lead not call it? 
Maybe they had a brain freeze. We all go through it and we see a call and we don't blow our whistle. And maybe our partner gets it, maybe our partner doesn't. And we say to ourselves, why didn't I blow my whistle? It happens to me every once in a while. Not a lot. If it happens every game, then you have to start reevaluating. But you know, that we're human. We're not going to get everything perfect. We're not going to see everything and blow our whistle because we reacted properly. So don't judge me, Dennis. I'm not. I'm just asking. I'm just, I'm just kidding. You could you could uh, you could have called a double foul on that. You could have, and I honestly think that probably would have been the smartest call to make because if we don't know what happened. We don't know who started what, but they both were clearly tangled up together. Yep. A double foul would have probably been the right foul to call. That way, if each coach gets mad at you, you could say, Coach, I'm penalizing you both. Stay Something out of happened. trouble. Stay out of trouble. That could have got you out of trouble. <laughs> yeah. Something happened. I'm not sure what it was, but they clearly were both involved. I'm going to nail them both. All right, let's watch one more, and then I'll let you guys go. That's been about an hour. Okay. Let's do a double whistle. Now, this is a pet peeve of mine. I'm not worried about the foul or the call. I'm worried about the double whistle and who takes it. All right? So we have a play coming around, and it comes down, and there's something happens. It was little, but something happened. We've got a foul and a foul, right? And the trail comes in and, and takes it and reports it. But who should take that foul? The lead. Whose area is this? Lead. 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 Is it on one of those uh, <laughs> divisional lines where it could be one or two officials? No. 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 <laughs> it is right in the middle of the lead's area. That is the lead's call that the lead needs to take it. Now, I'm not going to fault, well I am, but I'm not gonna fault the trail for having a double whistle, all right? But what the trail needs to say is, I had it, oh, hey, that's my partner's call, right? right. He should have been watching this stuff here. I'm not, I'm not releasing him of that responsibility, but we, if we have a double whistle, need to have enough intellectual strength to say, that wasn't my call. That wasn't my area. I'm pulling my hand down and let your partner take it. Now, again, I think this is a case of strong official, weak official, or I shouldn't say it that way, veteran official and newer official. And I think there was a, a sense of, I need to help out. I need to come in. I need to, but how can we let anyone take that call? Now I'm also going to shame the lead. The lead needs to come in strong and say, that's my call. If it's your call in your area, take it. Don't let someone steal it from you. I realize it's easier said than done when you've been working for 10 years and your partner's been working for 30, right? You wanna, oh, okay, he's got it. But I mean, if it's your call, take your call. Do we agree with that? Do you guys understand what I'm saying? Yep. Yes. Yep. Not even close. If it was over here and we had a, a lead center whistle, I could see maybe, but it was, that was the lead's call. The whole way it was the lead's really, call. Lead's got a really good view at it. He's right there. And the lead got it. He, he had it. the foul. All right. I know I said one more, but here's another double whistle. All right. Same game. All right. Whose call was it, right? It was in the paint. It was in the paint. It's a block charge play. He calls charge, which in my opinion is 100% correct. But that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is the ball is, let me pause it. The ball is here, right? Right. So it's clearly the leads area. And then the ball gets passed where? To the center's jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. The center starts here. The lead ends here. The lead should be watching this stuff here, but the center picks this play up. Right? What's the center watching? What's the center watching when the ball's here? Watching this. He sees this guy because that's what he's watching. He knows whether that guy's legal or not. He's been watching the whole play from start to develop to finish. So when the call is made, look, he had a he had a hand up. 
He was going to call it, but the lead steals it. Now, I also understand block charges in the paint are very hard for a lead to not get, right? We all get excited at lead, and we all want to come get that. So I understand why he did. But we as officials need to understand our primary area. And when there is a whist, a double whistle, and I'm primarily talking about double whistles, we need to know, oh, double whistle, is it my area or is it not my area? And if it's not your area, drop your arm. Let your partner take it. If your partner calls a block and gets it wrong because it wasn't, then it's a block. And we're going with a block. But it's his area. Let him take it. You got to give you got to give the center credit for for not uh, calling anything. Well, the center um the center put his arm down right away and said, "Okay, take it." Now again, I think a lot of it had to do with you've been working for 30 years, I've been right. working for 10. I'm using those numbers arbitrarily. So, okay, you can take it. You've been downstate, I'm trying to go down Okay, you can take it. But you know what? You're not going to go downstate if you keep letting guys take your calls. It just shows that you don't have enough strength as an official. And I'm not trying to, to cut on that specific official. What I'm trying to say is, as officials, we need to know what our calls are and own our calls and take our calls and don't let someone else take them from you. Now, if you had three calls in a row, which maybe this was the case, I had three in a row and they all went against the home team. And now finally, my partner calls one, maybe, maybe he needs to take it for that situation. And that's okay. But for the most part, if it's in your area and it's a double whistle, it's your call. Don't steal it from someone else. Agreed. All right. So what do you guys think? Good? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Good. Yeah. Thanks, it, Josh. Did I make it more understandable or did I make it more confusing? <laughs> Just looking at your smiling face, Josh. <laughs> hey, if we don't have basketball, I don't know what I'm going to do, people. I oh. might have to go to work. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that, Dennis. Yeah. <laughs> all right well thanks for coming on uh the next one is does anybody know it's a thursday because they're all on thursdays they're all seven o'clock september 10th september 10th we're going to talk about traveling traveling is always fun i've got lots of clips on traveling that you've probably never seen for any of these trainings all season long if you can't make one I don't expect you to make them all. I don't expect you to make a majority of them. But if you can't make one and you really wanted to see it, it will be available on, on YouTube. Good. All right. Well, thanks for joining. And if you have any questions or anything, uh, email me. I just uploaded. I don't know. I'm hoping all of you guys are subscribed to my YouTube channel. If you're not, go do that. But uh, I just uploaded a few new ones. Uh, I was told by a YouTube friend of mine, you got to put in better uh, – thumbnails so i got my my little beautiful <laughs> mug up there now so we'll check them out wow we're developing more and more as we go so uh email me if you got questions otherwise hopefully we'll see you next month okay right. Right. Thanks, Josh. Right. thanks guys awesome thanks. josh thanks man thanks. see you guys right. good to see you guys yeah